All right. All right. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having a good weekend. So this week, we're going to take a look at this new CVE 2021-44228, also known as Log Shell. Uh, so my agenda for today is to first show an example of log for shell exploitation. Uh, second, we're going to show how we could use the new log for shell canary token. And then finally, we are going to show how we can detect this with Snort. So a little bit of a background. This week, there was a zero day called log for shell, as I mentioned, was discovered, and it results in remote code execution from logging a particular string. Um, and this vulnerable log4j library is found in a lot of Java applications. So this makes it a really critical vulnerability. Um, and from what I'm reading, it just seems to be getting worse and worse. Like I can't even keep track of everything that's going on right now. Um, so let's dive in, let's see how it works. Let's analyze some network traffic with Snort and we will see how we can detect this. So if you can see on my screen here, uh, we're about to run this vulnerable Java application. So this vulnerable Java application is called Spring Boot and it's an open source Java based framework uh, that you could create a microservice with. So the, in this particular app, it's going to log uh, an X API version from the HTTP header uh, on the, the server. And that's what's making it vulnerable. So I just wanted to show real quick, uh, you guys could see on my Firefox, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, I just wanted to show real quick what that application looks like just so we have an idea. Um, so we could see here that, um, this request header gets logged and we can see that it's using this log4j uh, package, which is vulnerable. So let me go back here. Let's start up the app. Um, and while that's going, let's just see real here. So let's just talk about the exploit requirements. Um, so the server has to have a vulnerable log4j version like the one that I showed you. Uh, the endpoint must have a protocol like HTTP, TCP. I think it's even exploitable over UDP. And I've seen quite a few others as well. If you take a look at like emerging threat snort rules, you can kind of see all the different protocols there. Um, and finally, the um, it's gonna have to log out the string like we showed you. So, okay, this is running here. So the second thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna wanna download this JNDI exploit um, LDAPs. It's a, uh, it's a GitHub package. Uh, I don't have it up here actually. But it's basically just an LD a malicious LDAP server that is um, going to handle a request. So it's, once we log that string, it's going to make a request out to our LDAP server here that we're going to start. So I already have this installed. But if you don't, you could just do wget on this GitHub. Uh, then you just unzip JNDI exploit. Um, but I already have that. So we're just going to start that up. Uh, let's just change our IP, make sure we know that. Oh, I guess I don't have that. Um, okay. IF. Oh, is that what I did? I've been using PowerShell so much lately that I'm starting to mix it up. <laughs> Me too. I get that all the time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we're going to start this up. You can see here, just take note of this because this is not normal, I don't think. I'd never see LDAP listening on this port, but I guess it does have the 389. So just keep note of that. Um, and let's just clean this up real fast. Um, okay. Just trying to get everything together here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run this exploit against it. And what this is doing here is it's going to log, um, like I mentioned, it's going to log the X API version. And what this is doing here, we could actually take a look. Oh, I just accidentally opened that link. <laughs> um, so what this is doing here is it's just going to make a pawn file in the temp directory. So we're gonna just see if that works. But first, let's make sure we fill in our IP here and let's send it. So we sent this to the server could actually see that it was received. And let's actually, let's actually take a look and see if it actually is on the server here. Um, so if we take a look, what this is doing is this is just executing in Docker and just showing us the output of the temp directory. And we can see that that pawn file 
that we created, where is it here, uh, was created. So that's pretty cool. But I actually found out this morning that they even have this canary token. Um, do I have it up here? No, I do not. But I, I do have it ready to go. So there's this um, canary token that I already generated here. And let me just move. I have everybody in the corner here. I can't even see my screen. Um, so this canary token, um, if the if this exploit is or if this application is vulnerable, it's going to generate a canary token that I'm going to receive in my inbox here. You can see this morning I already received one. Um, so let's try that. And actually. I'm not too sure if anybody in here knows, but this just kind of hangs like this, but it should still trigger it unless something went wrong, but it did take a little while this morning. Did you have to specify your host name or is that already set? That's what I thought this morning. So I tried that and it didn't work and it actually is host name like that. Uh, Wait, I, I okay. thought that was very weird as myself. Uh -huh. um, let me find it. Maybe I did get something wrong or maybe it only lasts for a little while. Does anybody know? Maybe I needed to generate a new one. Oh, uh, let's take a look. No, that did not happen. But when I did test this this morning, it did. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Why don't we why don't we try it out real quick? What is it? Canarytokens.org. Let's just search. Uh, so we could select our token, and it's the new log for shell one. Mm -hmm provide an email address, it's just a backup email, and a reminder note, uh, we'll just do log for shell was successful. Mm -hmm. And let's create our token, copy this in. Um, and let's give this another try. Doesn't look like it likes it for some reason now. Ooh. Oh no, it did. Nice, good, yeah. Cool. cool. All right, so yeah, that's how we could use this new Canary token. I was thinking that it was gonna be used for something else. Like I thought um, it would be more of a honeypot, but this is really just so you could use it and see if the exploit actually works. And it's actually mm -hmm. kind of similar. I don't know if you guys saw, there's this log for shell uh, by Huntress which is very similar to what I just used. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, let me just show that real quick. Uh, so you could also use this as well. And like you would copy this in and then you would could go in here and view the connections, which is just similar to um, it sending it back to me as an email. So yeah, that's that part. So um, we already verified that that worked. So now let's do some detection with Snort. Uh, so let's open this up, let's go into our PCAPs. So you, um, I, I didn't record the PCAPs right now. I forgot to do that, but I did it earlier. So if you want to do that yourself, you can just do sudo tcp dump uh, dash i docker zero for the Docker interface. And then you could just write it out to you could just say log for shell that PCAP. But I already did that. Um, so let's take a look at the, this is the first exploit that we did. Remember this, uh, this just was um, creating that pond file. Um, and then this is the, uh, PCAP for that. So let's check that out with Wireshark. Okay, I believe this is it. Yeah, you can see it down there. So let's follow that. And how... so yeah, so what we're going to want to do here is, so we're going to want to look at inside this payload, and we're going to want to look for something like JNDI uh, colon LDAP. And that's something that we could do with Snort with their content, um, con uh, their, their, just with content and with Snort. Uh, and I'll show that in a second here. So let's close this and let's take a look at our Snort configuration here or a Snort rule that we're going to create. Uh, that's in Vim, Etsy, Snort, rules, and then local.rules are any custom rules that you're going to use. The other ones are just default. Uh, snort rules. So we're going to use one very similar to the one that uh, CrowdStrike posted yesterday, because uh, it's very simple. But I'm going to tell you right now that it's not the most effective because there's they've found out a lot. 
there's a lot more um, ways to obfuscate this payload, but this is just an example so we could see how to use this and and uh, and practice. So this is pretty inefficient, but this is just looking for any TCP um, from any IP, any port, um, going to any IP or any port. And we could actually just, we could make our own message here. So the message, oh, whoops, this is a read only file. Whoops. Um, okay, that's much better. So this message is just gonna be the alert that it shows when we run snort and the rule was successful. So we'll just say um, log for shell detected. And the content we're gonna look for, uh, if you remember looking at Wireshark or our, um, our exploit, which was up here, it just has this JNDI LDAP. So that's all we're gonna look for here. Um, and to make it a bit more efficient, we can add the, um, the flow that we wanna look for. So we could say from client, and we could also say establish. So we wanna see this payload come from a client going to an HTTP or uh, going to some vulnerable application. We wanna make sure that it was already established because we don't wanna waste our snort resources looking at every single packet. We wanna make sure that the, the TCP handshake has already been established here. And we could just define a class type. Uh, the SID always has to be a unique value, otherwise it won't alert. And this is, usually the revision number that looks like somebody took quite a few revisions here to get that one working. I don't know why they use that. Um, and then you usually just put a reference at the end. Um, all right, so as I showed you guys this touch.pcap, let's now use snort and I don't have it in my history, so I have it copied here. Um, let's show how we can test with snort. So this is gonna use our snort configuration. This is just the default snort configuration that you get once you install it. Uh, this is just gonna say alert out to the, our console. So just alert to the uh, terminal here. Uh, we're gonna read in our PCAP, which that is the wrong one. Um, we want to log this. So I have a log directory. Um, actually, I don't in here. That's a good thing to note. So that's gonna just log it here and I found, and I, I actually don't remember what this means, this dash K none, but when I was trying it yesterday, like I, I took one of these SANS courses where we had to do this and I could not figure out for the life of me why I was able to get it in the SANS class and I couldn't get it on this, this terminal. And it was this K dash none. So actually let's just take a look real quick and see what that is. Cause now I'm curious. Um, it's just saying logging mode none. Very odd that it wouldn't work. If anybody in here knows, let me know, but um. Wait, yeah. think, wasn't that lowercase k? Uh, was it? I guess the I, checks yeah. and validation one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, I've had to do it with Zeek too. Like if you try to run a PCAP, if you like capture a PCAP, if you try to run through Zeek, lots of times the, the TCP checksum will be invalid. So if you disable the checksum, it'll actually process the packets. That makes sense. Okay, yep. I remember learning that now. Thank you. And yeah, you're right. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay. So that's interesting. And Q, I believe, is just don't show like when snort is initializing, I don't know if anybody's ever played around with snort like this before, but when it initializes, you just see all this stuff printed out to the screen that you really don't need to see. So we run this and since we see that, uh, since we see this output, we know that the snort alert worked on that PCAP. So there's a really good way to test snort rules against network traffic that you're seeing. And sometimes it's nice to, to do an exploit like I just did, record it, and then do it in your own lab before doing it in production. Um, but I really wanna take a look here because that is not the most efficient rule we could do. I, I would highly recommend that you go to like a page like Emerging Threats and pull down their snort rules because their security engineers are working on this, you know, way more than I am and they're probably all collaborating on it. Um, so. It's a good idea to pull these down and take a look at them yourself. Um, you can see they're doing stuff here, like they're inspecting the, the bytes. So 3A, I believe is a colon. Um, so it's just a much, much more efficient rule than we wrote, but it's still important to be able to write your own rules here because maybe this zero day comes out and one of the, uh, one of the, your favorite um, 
like threat place like um, threat intel like emerging threats doesn't have this yet. So it's important to be able to know how to write your own and be able to do this on your own um, for some advanced threats. Um, and finally, I just wanted to talk real quick. Where is that? I just want to talk real quick about some of the different payloads that I've seen online. And like um, when you're hunting, just to be aware that, you know, we, we used a payload like this, but I, there's, they've seen payloads like this. I've personally seen payloads like this. Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about this and you can't just look for this one particular string here. Um, and I have, you know, I have the source up here where these were found from. Um, and finally, actually, um, if you have a web application firewall, there's a lot of companies that are coming out with like templates right now that'll help detect this as it keeps evolving. So just uh, be aware of that and check your web application firewall to see if they have something available. Um, all right, so with that, that was Log4Shell. Uh, good luck, everyone. Awesome, thanks.